In this document, Magic Quadrant for Data Center Networking, published on the 3rd of July 2017, Gartner are predicting the death of the CLI, and they say that the CLI is dead and the API is cool. They predict that by 2020, only 30% of network operations teams will use the CLI as their primary interface, down from 85% at year ending 2016. In the data center especially, it's important that configurations be automated. Real innovation comes with the use of an API which enables complete automation of repetitive tasks. They are saying that APIs and device level automation tools such as Ansible, Puppet and Chef can be used to implement a DevOps model we want to be automating networks using APIs without the involvement of human network operators, at least for a subset of tasks. There's a shift towards software. We have terms such as software-defined networking, network automation, network programmability, network abstraction, and others such as intent-based networking describing this trend towards a more automated network infrastructure. In this video, we're going to discuss Ansible, which is now part of Red Hat. Ansible is one of the most popular DevOps tools for automating networks. Other DevOps tools include Puppet, Chef and SaltStack. There are others as well, but Ansible has become a firm favorite amongst network engineers because it uses a clientless model. All you need to access a network device is SSH. You don't have to run an agent on your network devices. This is very important for a lot of network engineers, especially if they have older or legacy iOS-based devices. We want to be able to configure network devices easily from a server, but only access the network devices using SSH. I'm going to be using GNS3 and viral images in these videos. You don't have to use those. You could use a Dynamips image. You could use physical equipment. This is one of the advantages of Ansible. All we need on the network device is SSH access, and everything else is done intelligently on the Ansible server. So just get a Cisco network device, even if it's an old one off eBay, or use a virtual device within GNS3. I'm going to be using a DevOps approach in these videos and an approach that I very much like. As I've said in my Python course, just get started. The same is true with Ansible, just get started. Just like when you learnt to ride a bike or learnt to run, just get started. You're going to learn more by doing. Ansible makes this process very simple. In the next few minutes, if you're following along, you should be automating network devices using Ansible. I've made the script available and I've linked it below if you want to copy it and use it in your labs.
Now, before you can use Ansible to automate your network, there's a few things that you need to do. One of the obvious things that you need is you need Ansible. So you need to make sure that you've got Ansible installed. In this example, I'm using the network automation container, which has Ansible pre-installed. You've also got to make sure that you either have a DNS infrastructure in place or that you've configured a local host resolution. So as an example, I can't ping router two or switch one in this topology. You've got to make sure that your host resolution is configured properly so that you're able to resolve names to IP addresses. So before you think about automating networks, make sure that you've set up host resolution once you've done that, you've got to do some configuration within Ansible. We've got to set up an inventory, which is a list of hosts that we want to make changes against. We want to set up some Ansible configuration, and then we want to execute the playbook. So in brief, for Ansible, we want to create a host inventory. In other words, a list of hosts to be automated. We want to create a playbook. A playbook is essentially a list of tasks to be executed against one or multiple devices, and then we need to execute the playbook. Now, before you think about automating your network through Ansible, you need to think about your infrastructure. Ansible uses SSH to configure network devices. So that means you need to have SSH enabled on your network devices, and you need to have usernames and passwords configured with the right privileges. The Ansible control node or device that you're running your Ansible scripts on, it's going to SSH to network devices and configure them. So that implies that you have IP connectivity. You have SSH configured on your network devices. You've configured your VTY lines correctly. You've configured your usernames and passwords correctly. You've configured DNS or a local hosts file for name resolution. It also assumes that you've got Ansible installed. You can't automate a network with Ansible without Ansible. The Ansible control node cannot run on Windows. So you need to use, for example, a Linux device or Mac OS. So before you automate, think about getting your infrastructure in place and setting up the prerequisites for Ansible. I'll be back.